Finally, let's look at how to create groove templates from an audio file that you may have in your session. Now, what we have in Logic right now are two separate drum loops. I'll play them for you. Okay, that first drum loop has a shuffle feel to it. And I'm gonna play the second drum loop here by itself for you. This one has a triplet feel to it. Now, let's say we wanted to use both of these together. Now, if I play them together now, and I will play them together, they work tempo-wise, but they have two completely different feels. You have a shuffle feel on the first loop up here at the top and at the bottom. At the bottom, you have an actual triplet feel on this one. So what would happen if I wanted to give this loop the feel of this loop so that they would work together better? First, let's listen to what they sound like together now. Even though they're tempo-wise a match, they don't match because the feel of one is so completely different than the feel of another one. So we can actually do something about that by creating a groove template from this particular loop right here, the funk shuffle loop, and we can apply that feel of this performance to this. So this is how we do this. What we're gonna do is Take the funk shuffle loop here and we're going to flex it. So we're going to go over here to our inspector and we're going to go down here to flex mode and we're going to change it from off and we're going to select slicing. So immediately it slices that audio file up and it creates a flexed funk shuffle. It, it hasn't changed how it plays or anything right now. I'll play it. But this is where we need to dig behind the scenes a little bit because as you saw in the last section where we went in and we were playing with the phrasing of Trey's vocals on that line, when we flex the audio, Logic looks at the audio file and it analyzes it and it puts those transient markers at specific places where it guesses or thinks that you would time shift or move the actual audio. Now, sometimes it guesses perfect sometimes it puts transient markers in places where it shouldn't be or it doesn't have them in places where it should be so let's see where we can add transient markers if we want or take away transient markers if we need to what we're going to do is we're going to double click this to open it up in the sample editor and here in the sample editor we can see the actual transient markers if we click this button right here and that button is transient editing mode. And when you click that, these little gray lines or white lines, depending on what your screen looks like, allow you to see the actual transient markers that are part of the file now that we've analyzed it and flexed it. I'm going to um, zoom a little bit out so we can see them all. So what we want to have to make this work properly, because we want the timing of this or the feel from this. We wanna create a groove template based on the feel of this. We need to make sure that there are not any excessive use of transient markers or they're not transient markers in places where they shouldn't be. So what we're gonna do here is look here, like this one right here. Here's a good example. I'm gonna zoom in over this. And right here, this is a actual place where this is a st the decay of a hi-hat probably, let's see actually a kick and we want to get rid of this so that there's no need for this to be here it's just a little bit of information there that the when it analyzed it's a little bit too sensitive and it picked up that so we're going to get rid of that and let's scroll down a little bit further to see if there are any others like that here's another one and this is probably a hi-hat that's in there but i don't 
think that we need to have a transient marker there. So we're going to get rid of that one also. And this one is kind of out of place here. So I'm going to click on it and I can actually move it by dragging it to the right. Actually, that created another one. Let me double click this one to get rid of it. So what I did was place that one right at the head of this transient. I zoom in some, I can still see it's off a little bit. I think if you go up to the top, you can move it left or right. That's what it is. I was down too far on it. And I'm just going to move it over to the actual note. Just scroll down a little bit more to see here. It's another one that I'm going to take out. All right. So now I think I've got it pretty consistent with the actual performance there. Let me play it here. Uh, this is actually a hi-hat. I shouldn't have taken this one off. I need that one back in there. Let's see, where is it? Zoom out too far from it. Okay, I'm going to put this back here. I'm going to use my pencil tool to add one here. And this one looks like it needs to be shift over to the right a little bit. I'm going to take my mouse, put it to the top of it, and drag it over closer to the beginning of those transients. Okay, I think we're good now. So now I'm going to close this out. Now that I have adjusted where those transient markers that were automatically placed in there when we analyzed the file for flexing. And now they're in the file correctly. Now once we've done that, what we can do is take that information, those transients on that file, and we can create what's called a groove template, which will live in our quantize menu. And then we can use that template to quantize other files like this one and give it the feel and performance of this piece. So I'm going to keep this track selected. I'm going to go up here to the top of my inspector. And because it's flex now, I have the ability to quantize. So instead of quantizing it, changing it to the quantization of like a 16th or anything like that, I'm going to go here to the bottom of the quantize menu and choose make groove template. So when I click that, what it does now, if I go back into my quantize menus, you'll see I have the ability to quantize using this groove template that it created based on the name of the region as the funk shuffle 36 beat. And so now that's available to me to use for any other file that's in my session or in any session, as a matter of fact, if I open up another session, this will be available to me. So now, once I uh, have that done, I'm going to go down here to the track below, which is, this is the one that I want to give the feel of this. So I'm going to solo this one and unsolo that one. The reason I have to solo one and unsolo the other one is because my mic is soloed in the background so that you can always hear me. Um, I'm going to take this track now, this audio region, this triplet feel, and I'm going to have to flex that. So I'm going to go over here. Once the track is selected and the region is selected, I'm going to go over here to flex mode, which is off now, and I'm going to change that to slicing also. Remember what slicing does is it puts transient markers on the region, and when it stretches it, it actually doesn't stretch it. I take that back. When it either speeds it up or slows it down, it doesn't stretch the actual audio file. It shifts them left to right to keep the actual performance sounding the way that it would originally without stretching or squeezing the audio file. So we need to kind of do the same thing with this one. Logic automatically analyzed it and it went in and it put those transient markers in it. So we want to go in and doctor those so that they fall in the right place too. So that when we quantize it with the groove template that we created from the shuffle track up here at the top, that it will be accurate. So I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to open it up in the Wave Sample Editor again. And I'm going to go into Transient Editing Mode. And as you can see with this one, we actually have quite a few transients that are there that don't need to be there. This is just the kick at the beginning. Here, let me play it. Actually, those are some hi-hats in there too. Let me let it play back again. But I don't think we need to have these in place for what we want to do. So I'm going to get rid of these. And another way you can get rid of them in groups, well, with this file, I could actually 
select over the ones that I want to get rid of and I can go up here and hit minus and maybe have to hit it a couple of times. This is actually subtracting them based on sensitivity and get rid of those. Um, I think I'm going to get rid of this one here. And I can get rid of these by double clicking them like we did before. That's a high head. I think I'll leave that one in there. All of these here I'm going to get rid of. Same hi hat that we saw before. These are the main ones I'm going to be getting rid of after the kick. All right. Let me get rid of that selection I got in there. Play it. Okay. So now that we've done that, and we flex this one. We've created a groove template from this one. What we're going to do is quantize this piece of audio down here with the feel of the funk shuffle region here at the top. Let's listen to this so we remember what it sounds like before we flex it. I mean, before we quantize it. So what I'm going to do is go up here to this menu at the top. And I'm going to go into the quantize and I'm going to choose funk shuffle. So now the whole feel of this loop has completely changed. Let's see if it works with this one now. So you can hear the difference now. Now we've changed the complete feel of this triplet drum loop that we had, and we made it take on the feel of this shuffle drum loop that we had here at the top. Here it is again without the quantization on it. It's non-destructive, so we can go back to what it was originally. And here's what it sounded like originally playing against the funk shuffle. And then here's what it sounds like once we add that groove template to it and quantize it to take on the feel of this. So there you have it. We could have did it the opposite way. We could have taken this one and focused it on that, meaning created a groove template from the triplet and then gave the funk shuffle the feel of the triplet or vice versa. And you can use it for so many other things. It doesn't just have to be drums. I've seen it done with uh, guitar, rhythmic parts, and all types of stuff. Now, another thing that I'd like to show you is that even with the groove that we put on here, and it works pretty good with it, you, you can look at it, you can see some of the notes don't quite hit where you would want them to hit. Like if I solo just this triplet, this right here I think is a kick sound. Let's see. That's a kick sound, and it's lined up with the shuffle feel to be played against a hi-hat here instead of playing against this kick that happens in the actual shuffle piece which is right here so what we can do even though we gave it that feel we can still manipulate it manually to do what we want to do we can go into flex view which i hit command f and now we're in flex view and this kick right here I want it to line up and have the feel fall in with this kick right here. So what I can do is take my flex tool right here, and if I drag it, notice that there's a white line that goes up from this region and into the next region all the way up to the bar rule at the top, but it also will snap to the transient markers in the region above it. So I'm able to take that particular kick and line it directly up with the kick in the region above it and because I'm using slicing I'm not squeezing at all I'm just moving it to the right and it's keeping the same tone by not squeezing or stretching the actual audio file so I'm moving that kick from being lined up with the hi-hat to actually in time with the kick here and let's play it now <laughs> 